In the past, uh, you know, of course, everybody makes a huge to do about the debates. Is you know, oh my God, they could change elections. Have they really? Well, it's mainly based on 1960, the famous uh, Nixon Kennedy debates. People watch it on, well, that's or listen first, to that's, it on the radio. It was the first time people started to watch debates on television. Right. They when they listen to it on the radio, they think Nixon won. When they watch it on television, they think Kennedy won. And it's an incredibly close election, and it seems like the the polls moved after the debates. So it's very fair to assume that those debates did make a difference, television made a difference, and Kennedy won. Yeah, Kennedy was down a point in polling. There wasn't as much polling back then, of course. Kennedy mm -hmm. was down a point before the debates. He was up three or four points after the debates, and he won by, you know, eight votes. So, so and since 1960, the country has been mental about these debates because of that. And because it's you know good political sport and people like to you know see it that are in this business and they well, make and a also huge it's, deal. it's a rare opportunity, it's the only opportunity to see these two guys together. Right. You know. Now, what do people remember about the substance of the debates? I would argue next to nothing. No, they remember you know if you remember anything, you remember the moments that were different. You remember Ross Perot and his charts and the fact that he was different, and you remember George H. W. Bush. Yeah, think about how unexciting the debates are. That the thing we remember is somebody checking their watch. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Poor. Like, whoa, that was a big moment. Somebody checked their watch. Poor guy. The yeah. way Al Gore uh, breathed became right. a big issue. Come right. on, right. come on, right? And the best memorable lines are the our lines, our zingers. You know, you, I know new Jack Kennedy. You're no Jack Kennedy. That was a vice presidential debate. Yeah. It was the most meaningless debate ever. It was a vice presidential debate where one guy annihilated the other guy who looked like a fool, a buffoon who shouldn't be on the national stage, and his guy cruised to victory. Yeah, <laughs> Dan Quayle's uh, team won anyway. So that was uh, turned out to be irrelevant as well. And now, the one modern-day set of debates that people think made a difference uh, is the Bush-Gore debates. Now, there are several caveats to that. The reason they believe that is that Al Gore had about an eight-point lead before the first debate. By the end of the de uh, third debate, uh, he had lost that lead. But now, look at what happened in the debates. This is the polling immediately after the debates. Gore easily wins the first debate. Now, which is really interesting, Bush actually significantly are, wins the second are, debate. Are those the numbers of who won the debate or the polling numbers? No, who won the debate. Okay, I Okay, so that's very important. And then the third debate, Gore wins again. So. So let's see those numbers again. Okay, now. Because, well, go ahead. So people think, okay, Gore lost the debate, so hence it swung the polls. Except that's not true. Gore won two out of the three debates, according to the polling, on the debate, immediately thereafter. So what happened in the meanwhile? The media with the sigh. Oh my God, Al Gore sighed during one of the debates. Al Gore sighed. It's, everybody hates him. Everybody despises him. So then I thought, wait, which debate was the sigh in? Because if it was in the second debate, then they might have a decent point because Bush, in some miraculous way, apparently won that handily, right? No, the sigh was in the first debate. Yeah. The debate that Gore won handily according the, the, to the polls. The media is, you know, look, this was the, the darkest years of American media were 1996 to 2004, mm -hmm. think, you know, five anyway, mm -hmm. right, I would, yep. I would say. And uh, got a whole lot of things poorly done. And uh, among them was that because the notion if you watch the television coverage after all those debates, the debates went Bush, went Gore, Bush, Gore for who won the debates according to the polling. And by the media's reaction, it went Bush, Gore, Bush. I mean, the media suggested that Gore did great after the second debate because he stopped sighing, which was annoying to a, a viewer like me. I thought, that guy seems like an ass. Um, and he stopped doing it, and then he seemed dead and wooden in the second debate, which is apparently how viewers responded to it. And the media just played things exactly, exactly the opposite way. With, God, their own, so with their own sage analysis. And, and in some ways, I'm the perfect guy to analyze those debates because as you remember, Ben, at the time, we're working together in Miami. Uh, I'm a Republican. I'm more likely to vote for Bush. I'm, and I've never voted for a Democrat at that point. I'm a quote unquote liberal Republican. So I'm you know, in the middle. And I'm willing to consider it, obviously, right? Bush is going with a compassionate conservative thing. Now, remember, these are the pre-war, right. pre-torture years. Right, it was a phrase you liked, a phrase yeah. you're looking for. Exactly, right? I watched the first debate and I thought, like, I didn't catch the sigh, I didn't care, care about the well, sigh. You, you, you know why? Because I was sighing. Right. Uh, here's the Republican candidate I want to support that sounds like a blithering idiot. And I'm sitting there going, oh, 
Oh, oh my God, we can't have this. This guy's going to be the president? That's crazy. You made up your mind after the first debate. You're like, first, I, it's I can't, over. Can't, can't vote for this guy. And I decided I'm going to vote for a Democrat for the first time. I'm going to vote for Gore because the Republican candidate is but a moron. It was a very fr- proud day for me. I was very, <laughs> I was very happy. <laughs> and so it's amazing what the media analysis of the debates does as opposed to the actual debates. And so they have been so wrong for so long. It's maddening. They were, but yet they learn nothing from it. They were afraid to point out what the real storyline of that first debate was, which was a Sarah Palin-like figure, unre- not even remotely ready to take the national stage. Should have been the only story. My God, that guy seems unprepared. He's the Republican nominee. What if something happens in the world? <laughs> but don't worry, nothing will. 